My name is Parth Sarthi Sen Sharma. I am an IS officer of 1994 batch of the Uttar Pradesh cadre. And right now I am posted as Principal Secretary Medical Health and Family Welfare in Government of Uttar Pradesh and located in Lucknow. Our training of the 1994 batch started from 4th September. On 3rd and 4th September night, we traveled as a group from Delhi in a bus, overnight bus to Masur Academy. Why we traveled in a group was at that time because of the Uttaranchal agitation. Masuri was under curfew and there was no public transport available. So the some of the probationers who knew each other got together. They organized a bus. It started from Connaught Place and we reached Masuri in the 4th September morning, 1994. The first course is a foundation course in which many services probationers come together. The first two years when you join the service, you re become remain as a what you, they call probationer, but actually what you call is uh, what you are called is an officer trainee, OTs. So the first part of the course is always a foundation course. The foundation course is held in Masuri Academy and also in other academies. But the IAS foundation course is always in the Masuri Academy and their different services also join them. So in our time, I remember our foundation course had people from the, apart from the IAS, from the IPS, from the foreign service, from the forest service, and also from Indian account and audit service, railway traffic service, railway account service. They all, we all came together. It was in Masur Academy. Masur Academy has changed since then, but it also remains the same. The main director's building, Karmshila building remains the same. New buildings have come up, infrastructure has been added. But in many ways, the academy is still the same. I have been lucky that since 1994, I have been going to the Masur Academy many times, as both as a lecturer and as a trainee. And I have maintained my contacts and my connection with the Masur Academy. In the first three months, the foundation course happens. The subjects are uh, of general nature, not any service specific, but also it is punctuated with many experiences which have continued till then, till now. One uh, experience is, is a trek, Himalayan trek. So the probationers are made divided into groups and they are given different routes in the Himalayas to trek. Basically, not only for increasing their physical fitness, but also to increase their appreciation of nature and to understand how the environment and nature is so precious and precarious for all of us. The second uh, break comes from the course when people go uh, uh, in what is called village visit. So groups of four or five or six probationers, they go to a village uh, in the hinterlands of India. I had gone, I remember, in a village in Jaunpur district of Uttar Pradesh. At that time, I didn't know that I would be joining Uttar Pradesh finally as, and I would be allotted Uttar Pradesh cadre. So for, few, for a week or so, people remain in the village. Many, for many of the probationers, it is the first time they have ever lived in a village. So, and village life and village is a very, very different matter. It was a very different matter than urban life even then. It is even now a very different matter. And people live there, understand how villagers live, what are their thinking, what is their dynamics, what are their problems, what are their aspirations. So that is one part of the foundation course. Just after the foundation course finishes, people go on Bharat Darshan. Now, by this time, the other service people go to their respective academies and the academy suddenly looks empty. IS officer trainees are only left. This IS officer trainees are divided into groups and they go to different parts of India for Bharat Darshan. As a part of the Bharat Darshan, there is always an army attachment. For a week to 10 days, the probationers get attached to some army regiment. In my time, I remember, we were with the Kumau regiment and also with the Rajput regiment. And probationers used to go at that time, apart from army, to either of the two, Navy or Air Force attachment. I don't know whether it's the same today, but I remember in our time, we had gone to Agra for the Air Force attachment. As a part of the Bharat Darshan, we also used to go and get attached to some NGO working in the hinterlands. I remember we had gone to Udaipur in Rajasthan and worked with an NGO called Seva Mandir. So this continues and then there is at some point of time a secretariat attachment. So we used to go to the parliament, watch in the galleries, look at the parliament proceedings, look into the secretariats and work. Today, the probationers have, after their training finishes, they also have an attachment with the central ministries as assistant secretaries, which was not there in our time. After that, the professional course used to start. The professional course used to be for six months. And it was uh, 
a heavy course. There is a different deputy director who will be the in charge of your professional course. Uh, this is now then confined only to the IS, and at that time you are taught law, especially law, and other uh, national programs. A different people from different fields, eminent people come and uh, deliver lectures. You are also expected to do physical activities. So there is a compulsory physical activity. Horse riding is no longer compulsory, I understand. So it, it is a choice that you make whether you want to do horse riding or not. After the professional course finishes, you go to your respective cadres because by that time the state cadres are allotted. You go to the respective cadres for a year or so in which an essential part of that is a district attachment. You are allowed given a district in which you then work closely with the collector and get trained on job. There is also a stint in the state, respective state academy. So, for example, in our time, Uttar Pradesh and Uttaranchal was one state. So our state academy used to be in Nanital. But now our Uttar Pradesh state academy is in Lucknow. So apart from that, uh, for many of the officer trainees, if essential part of the course is also language training. I was, I studied in Delhi, so my Hindi was quite good, so I, and I was a lot in Uttar Pradesh cadre. So for me, language was not an issue. But when North Indian going to Tamil Nadu or Kerala or a South Indian vice versa coming to Uttar Pradesh, language training is a very, very important part of the entire course. During the district attachment, sometimes you are also given a posting. For example, we in that time were given, made SDMs. And uh, we also conducted the Lok Sabha elections of 1995 as assistant returning officers. After the field attachment, you come back to the Masur Academy and you have a two months or so phase two, which in which you again relearn, but also exchange your experiences from the field. And I remember in September 1996, my entire training finished and I joined back to Uttar Pradesh and was given my first posting as a regular SGM. Actually, most of the trainees, um, aspirants, when they are studying, naturally uh, sacrifice their physical activities and physical um, training. Most of them give up on their sports for at least two or three years. I was uh, also doing a full-time job. So my sports activities and my physical training was also limited. And most of the aspirants would have a very limited physical regime at the time when they were preparing. And it is expected. So at the time when you join the Masur Academy, the Academy takes care of that, that they bring you back to shape. I remember in 4th September 1994, when, the, when we entered the Academy, many of the um, young office, officers, trainees were completely out of shape. So that is not to be worried upon. At the time of preparation, I think you should not worry about that. Um, the Academy will take care of your physical regime when you join there. It, it is actually very important to realize that when a person joins the Masur Academy and when a person comes out of the Masur Academy, there is a lot of difference. One of the differences is definitely the exposure because there are many eminent people come and address you. And the confidence that you get because of the various attachments of not only army attachment and village visits and uh, the trek and uh, the secretary attachments, but also the district training. So it, I think the major part of the training in the Masuri Academy is not what happens in the classroom, but the experiences that the probationers are exposed to during this over, overall period of two years. Also, the officer trainees are made as escort officers to the speakers who come and join the academy uh, for, as a speaker. That is the time when these probationers come in contact one-to-one -one with senior officers or you know, um, established persons from their own field. And that is also in a way when the academy trains you and molds your personality subtly. I think uh, as an officer trainee, as well as an aspiring student and also as an officer, one should be confident, but one should not be arrogant and overconfident also. So that academy gives you an opportunity in during those two years of training to mold your personality. And my uh, message to the students would be that please go with an open mind Expose yourself to all the experiences, build relationships, build networks during the, these two years. Because those people whom you meet in the academy during those two years are going to be in the service in different parts of India, in different services for the next 30, 35 years. And that network, that esprit de corps, as they say, is very, very important and it will be very useful 
in your entire career. I hope my words uh, about the training in the Masoor Academy would be of some use to the people who will be joining in subsequent years in the course. Thank you for watching.